Hello YouTube, this is Sam Gerrans from Quarternight.com. Today is Tuesday the 6th of September 2022. Sounds apocalyptic, doesn't it? We're still here. Anyway, um, as people will know who follow this channel, I've been away for quite some time. Um, after finishing uh, all the work that I really wanted to do, especially finishing up with the God Protocol and uh, the Mysterious Letters of the Quran, uh, basically I was mentally burnt out um so i took a couple of well in the end i actually only took about a month off but um a, a month off for me is uh, just doing something different i needed to do something completely different so i have been doing that and i'm going to tell you what it was in brief and then i'm going to just sort of outline a couple of ideas and 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 that's going to be it so what i did over the last well i suppose about six weeks is i've been reading uh a lot of stuff i wouldn't perhaps have read some of which I wouldn't have read um and I've just been taking a load of walks and just uh, not spending all day long staring at a computer in fact I've been staying away from computer almost entirely uh, a few emails and bits and pieces notwithstanding um I also went uh, if you don't know me don't know my channel etc um I happen to live in Russia although that's not you know my main thing I, it's just a sort of historic historically that's how it, it's turned out um I, I live in sort of uh, about 800 miles 800 kilometers east of Moscow and um so obviously uh, <laughs> what's going on in the world in in the in the bigger sort of frame has an effect a different sort of effect here than it does uh, where you are but i'll get to that unless you live in russia i'll get to that a bit later on um i went to chechnya for about six days and i've been there before and i went to have a look to see if there was still a community anywhere somewhere with real believers that wasn't completely destroyed by modernity and so on and um i've i've liked nearly all of the chechens that i've met and uh it, it just in life in general and uh, they're people that i mean like anywhere there is there's a, there's a caste system there's a class system there's you know there, there are distinctions between the types of person that you're going to meet um but i i find them in in the majority of cases anyway to be very honorable people and to have um you know really have something about them so i went to have another look really to have to see whether it might be somewhere that we we could move um i don't know the the, the jury's out on that um uh grozny which is the capital of chechnya has been if you know anything about the history of russia Russian Federation vis-a-vis -vis Chechnya you'll know what's happened there over the last 20 30 years um they've rebuilt certainly the center of it made it look very, very nice and all of that um what i saw there i think is going to be true of a lot of um countries a lot of nominally islamic countries uh, you can see uh, some really really decent people and and that certainly is there but you can see that what's there is also a kind of a schizophrenia in a way and i'm going to get to see if i can touch on some of this a bit later on but what what there is is and it's completely understandable and i think the older generation there are very concerned about it and there's nothing they can do to stop it is on the one hand you have what's essentially a traditional society uh, being eaten out by modernity so whilst the majority of Chechens would identify as believers and let's say that's true and certainly certainly I met uh, amongst some people and people are different of course but some of the conversations that I've had in Chechnya um, people with a, a very deep a very obviously you know sincere uh, religious faith um, and yet the society itself is uh, being influenced by mobile phones i mean mobile telephones and the influence that it's having on women in particular what i noticed there there is quite um a bit of a cult of that lips thing i don't know if you have it in the west where everyone wants to look like oh what's that actress called angelina jolie um my daughter my, my daughter because a lot of the women in the town i live in have this awful thing done to their faces and my daughter, who's nine, uh, is, is a bit under the influence of that. And she she took some sellotape and stuck it over her mouth to make her lips go like that. Um, so that so there is all of that. 
And in in short, and I'm going to get to some books that I'm going to recommend, some of which I've read recently. Um, Jack C. Lull in his uh, The Technological Society talks about this. And he doesn't quite say this, but um, I'm going to summarize. And, and the summary is any society that doesn't apply technique, what he calls technique, and it's somewhat a little bit different to just technology. It's, it's a kind of a rational methodology. Any society that doesn't apply it, rationality over what you might call, for want of a better word, spirituality and tradition, is going to be destroyed by any society that does apply it. Okay, And any society that does apply it is going to be destroyed by it. This is really really what I've learnt in, in summary, or a part of it anyway, over the last, last month or two. So anyway, I went there and I could see that that was what was happening. So you end up with a kind of a schizophrenia. On the one hand, you have this you know, uh, traditional um, sp spiritual based, if you want to call it based in like analogy and symbol society, which would be f closer to the medieval metric. And yet everyone's walking around with iPhones and and uh, and so on. These two things are. They cannot coexist. Anyway, this is a big subject. I'm not going to get into it all now, but uh, whilst I have a, a, a lot of time for Chichen, I really, really liked it. And and the, the Chichen people, um, I, I, what I saw there, unfortunately, is the same. It's just further down, a little bit further back down the um, the production line to where, to where we are here, let's say, and even further away from where you are there. But everywhere's going in the same direction. Anyway, going to move on to the next thing. Um, I've been thinking over the last while, you know, shall I make more videos? Is it worth it? I don't want to just make videos just to make videos. It's ridiculous. Um, unless I've got something to contribute. And I think that I have. And I'm going to kind of summarize what I think that is. And then out sort of set out some sort of framework of what, how I see it going and, and and then go on to the next subject. So in summary, I think that we're all living through, I mean, people who've watched my earlier videos uh, will see that I kind of was right, at least in general outline, that you know, Western society is being flushed down the toilet. And and, and now, now, and when I say the West, you see the whole thing about the West is, it's not just Europe, it's the, everywhere is Western now, everywhere is using technique. So, you know, India, China, it doesn't matter where, you know, East Asia, it doesn't matter, they're all using the same stuff. Um, and I think that it's, I think it's a, an, uh, an incredible psychological psychic stress for people now just to say oh you know you've got to believe in god and you know, do this and do that sure that's a part of it but i think that um i think there is a a, a a reason to express some of the insights that i have because uh contrary to popular belief um you know doing what i do isn't easy it's it's, it's work and it's painful and i think i kind of process a lot of the angst, pain, whatever you want to call it, that a lot of other people are feeling as well. And I, I perhaps to some extent, I can give it some expression to that. Um, it's not like we sort of bring a bottle suffering party. That's not quite how I see it. But more, sometimes if somebody can say what it is that you feel, but you know, you never really said it that way before. It, 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 I mean, I certainly experienced that listening to other people talk. Uh, you can, it's, it's, it speeds up your, your process. So there's that, especially at this time. Now, as ever, my main work, um, I'm just looking up here because I've got some, I've actually got some notes. <laughs> if it feels a little bit more structured than usual, that'll be why. Um, so read notes. Yes, note one, read notes. Um, so I think that there's a way that I can, if it works, that, but especially over this time, because things ain't going to get any better. And at some point, um, at some point, I expect the internet's going to be, you know, cut off for various reasons. Either electricity goes away or internet goes away or freedom goes away or whatever it is. But I think for a while, I, I actually have a duty of uh, care, if you want to call it that, to to people who perhaps have read my books or not read my books or just, um, I, I, I'm not a big fan of the when enough people wake up paradigm. In fact, it's one of my bugbears and it irritates me greatly, but but... 
uh, certainly this will be a time in which people who, well, all of, all of the foundation upon which most people have been building their lives has just collapsed. Um, I, 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 I just understood that in childhood. In fact, I, I kind of have always known it. And um, in some ways I sort of felt as growing up uh, alienated from, from this society that all seemed to know exactly where it was going. It never made any sense to me. Um, well, you know, in some ways, you know, the chickens have come home to roost. Uh, I, it's not that I'm sitting here, you know, bathing in, in Schadenfreude, but to some extent, uh, you know, I, I see that my instincts were right. Um, and I think that I'm not alone. I don't think it's going to be a huge number. Quranically, it, it never is. It's n As far as I understand it, it's uh, the believers are in a minority. Um, so is it worth, you know, making videos for a small amount of people? I think, I think possibly yes. But in any case, I'm going to get into kind of why, because I've, I've got something that I want to do. So it, it, I can sort of put these two things together. So anyway, that's all that. I'm going to be writing a new book, which isn't specifically for believers. And I'm not particularly going to talk about it here, although it will um, obviously kind of bleed over in some ways, just because it's what's going on in, in my mind. Um, so that's a project that is I've sort of set out for myself you know, in whatever whatever time we have. You know, I'm I'm a writer. I'm a thinker. This is what I do. This is what I want to do. So I'm going to I'm going to concentrate on that. But as regards this channel and uh, and so on, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I've got a couple of things I want to do. Number one is I'm going to I'm going to write short articles for. Uh, blocks of parts of the Qur'an. I'm going to just start with Al-Fatiha, the first surah, and Al-Baqarah, the second surah. And, you know, that's just going to set that. If, if, if things go well, maybe I'll continue and do more. But I want to write what you might call, um, I suppose, reflections or meditations. It's not exactly tafsir. I don't really see it in that way. But um, subjective reflections and thoughts based on i mean I've, I've worked out how much time i've spent working on this broader quranic project roughly it's around 20 25 thousand hours so i've spent a lot of time thinking about it now quite a lot of those hours have been doing some mindlessly tedious things but some of it's been spent reflecting and so on and i think i think i've got something to give so i uh, if i if if that works and uh you know, if I can do it and and it is of benefit, I'm going to do it. And if it isn't, I'll stop and go and do something else because I have got some other things to do. And in fact, I'm going to be doing some of them, as I say, in parallel with this and not not necessarily directly associated with it. So so there's that. So the format that I I envisage is I will write a a series of thoughts like like a short article uh, treating of let's say El Fatiha. So that'll be the first one. And then Al-Baqarah, let's say, verses one through five, that'll be the next one. And do these in in short videos because people don't read. I, I understand that. Um, but then I will, sometimes when you say things and you explain them, you, you know, you've, you've done your thinking and then you, you, you speak it out, uh, new stuff comes to you. So probably I'll add something to it or move things around on the basis of, of of the actual talk and then i'm going to post that on my website so that people can read it and um the way i see it is that over time uh you see um, production is really about discipline it's just about doing stuff regularly and you produce a body of work it's amazing um over time i hope to at least uh, al fatiha and al baqarah to produce a uh, you know, a, a body of work that describes and maybe assists other people in their processes of reflection on that. And, and then if there's still something to do, you know, maybe move on to the next order and so on. So that's something I think I'd like to do uh, once or twice a week, something like that, God willing. So that's one part of it. Um, the second thing that I was thinking of doing is because I get a ton of questions and I've been a little bit a little bit coy about answering questions, uh, partly because I was too busy, partly because um, that wasn't my focus. 
Uh, and and my, my sort of set response has been sort of read the Quran, go away and use your brain. And that sort of is going to be my <laughs> pretty much my, my baseline uh, position. But I think that I, I can answer questions from my own experience and, and insights. I'm not setting myself up as a mullah I'm not, I, or, you know, uh, you know, anything like that, a mufti. I don't see myself in that way precisely. And if you want my personal opinion, I think in terms of the broader historical perspective, I think we're a bit past that. But I, I can share what I think. And, um, and so this is the way it's going to work. So for all, it doesn't mean I'm going to answer every question. But if you have a kind of a question then you can put it in the comments and if you write question in capital letters i uh, i will as i kind of skim through comments i will see it uh, i will give it a very cursory glance if it's if it's mad insane insulting you know delusional whatever i'm going to skip over it but if it's just a, you know quite a succinct uh question that makes sense in english then it will possibly get thrown into a kind of a short list of questions. And so, all that to say, uh, I'll collect a few. I don't know how many. I, I don't know how this is going to work. And then once in a while, I'll make a video which is like a Q&A. So I'll just read out the question and then give you my thoughts on it. Um, I think that there's some, there's some value to that, possibly. Certainly, I get a lot of questions. So it would be much easier better to do it this way than than any other way so that's if there are no questions i'm not going to do it but if there are then i'll consider them so that's the way i'm i'm looking at that so there's that one yes and the third thing i'd like to do is to make occasional videos and they are going to be occasional videos and i'll get to why they're going to be occasional videos in a minute um about the whole you know ukraine uh injections uh a, a new world order thing um uh, maybe more particularly to do with um, my perspectives being here in Russia, because I think they might be of interest to some people, but that is not the focus of this channel. But maybe once in a while, you know, they kind of all accrue all of these things. And maybe once in a while, I'll make a video like that. So all that to say, uh, that's how I see it. Uh, if I get to a point where I think, you know what, this, there isn't, really enough benefit to other people for this um or, or to my own creative processes from this then you know i'll drop it and move on but um i've had quite a lot of people write and say you know could you come back and do some more stuff and i was thinking only if i've got something that i can you know genuinely give uh, just to make videos to make videos what's the point i mean you know we're, we're all grown-ups let's just move on to something else so but that's where i am with it uh partly my wife said you know you should and so uh, that was one factor but anyway so that's all of that mm -hmm. next one yes uh da -da 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 -da. yeah how i'm going to interact with this uh, just just so you know i mean i've changed the way that i operate with the internet i have to say i find the internet almost oh, sorry, I'm moving moving a piece of paper there i find the internet now uh you've probably noticed it's almost useless it's um it's it was fantastic f for the kind of the wild west years and now it's all turned into a shopping mall mall i'm not quite sure how you say that word uh, english people kind of trip over this word shopping m-a-l-l -L, mal mall whatever it is and over the last few years i mean i i realized that it was pointless the internet was is becoming sanitized um maybe there are still some parts of it which aren't but certainly those days where you could search and use various search engines just and come across crazy interesting stuff Th those seem to have been going away and what you're finding is that people are really kind of self-censoring uh it's th that's the way it works but i'm not going to get into that subject right now except to say that what i've been doing is buying books um because uh, and not only books books by dead men almost entirely uh i'm not saying that everything written like in recent times is is not worth reading but there are uh, well, there are two factors. One is that um, one is that publishing is becoming sterile, pretty much. 
um, I'm talking about mainstream publishing. And and secondly, the the older books that were perhaps not so good tend to get forgotten. Uh, a bit like the Beatles, you know, you think Beatles wrote all these great songs. Yeah, they did write some great songs, but they really wrote some, they, they also wrote some really bad songs. But people forget the bad songs. They just rem remember, you know, Yesterday or Hey Jude or whatever it was. Um, I Am The Walrus, I don't know, whatever it is. But they forget about all the songs that were, you know, not very good and that tends to be what happens with old stuff as well to some extent to some extent although there is the uh, the memory hole factor anyway what i've done is is got some books mainly by people who are safely in the ground so they're not going to be coming back and sort of second guessing what they said first time around it also means that you have a you've had some time to see what's happened since and what i'm going to do now is to just recommend a series of books all of which i've read apart from one which I'm in the process of reading, which, well, having read them, made me realise that, you know what, the the internet, especially news, in, and I include in this um, what you might call um, truther news or uh, alternative media, or, you know, all of that, and I, I've got nothing against it, and I've, I've recommended particular channels on my channel, I still recommend those channels, but what I think is, is that what happens is when you get too, uh, especially under stress, especially especially in an existential crisis, which is what, well, we're actually, we're always in, but but now we've just come to realise it, it becomes almost like a, a trigger, uh, a bit like, say, a Pavlovian experiment with a, you know, a rat with a, with the sugar, and he, he, every time he has a particular trigger, he eats the sugar, and the sugar makes him stress, and then so he does the thing again. It's very easy to get into that regarding the internet. Um, here I am on a YouTube channel recommending that people don't 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 look at the internet so much, but that's really where I am. I read books. Uh, I'll just before I get into the books that I'm going to recommend, I'll just sort of tell you what my my process is at the moment. Um, I check my emails once a day, at the end of the day, once, that's it, that's all, that's enough, I don't need to check it anymore, I do have to check it once a day, but Monday to Friday, once a day, that's enough, and then just deal with it, and then that's it, so that's the first thing that I do, the second thing that I do personally, I'm not saying you should do this, but me personally, I, I don't have any social media mm, interactions, um, I did have a Facebook page, I did have a, a Twitter account. I never really got on with Twitter. It seemed to me a kind of intrinsically idiotic genre, but I mean, whatever. But I, I did have one, but I, I don't I don't have it. I don't use it. I mean, I have it so that no one can take it, but I don't I don't use it. There's nothing on there. I did have a, a Facebook page, which I used in a way um, in a different part of my process. But I came to realize, you know what? This isn't for you. You're for it. <laughs> this this isn't this is a, a an attention economy. And um, if you look at the actual value, the actual value from using this, at least in my experience, uh, it's a well a waste of time. That's the way I see it. I mean, what re what real value comes out of it? What real connections come out of it? What real community comes out of it? None. You're just giving them information. Anyway, so all I have is this. I have this, uh, the, the YouTube thing, which, and that's it. I don't touch anything else because I think it's pointless. So that's the first thing. Second thing is, um, for me personally, um, especially as regards news and, you know, we all get sent you know stuff all the time, is I don't open any of it uh, except on a Saturday, maybe a Sunday, but Saturday. Saturday, okay. And then you'll f find that, most of it's actually pointless and you choose because you've only got a, sh a short amount of time now but you know, an hour or two i'm going to look at whatever it is going to be i become much more uh, discerning amongst it um, much more um, jealous of my time and much i feel much sort of calmer in myself it reduces stress so that would be that's that's what i've done and all of that to say with this because one of the reasons i one of the my major misgivings about making any more videos as you people will know who've followed my stuff i actually i shut down all the comments i mean there were some good comments but in all the rest of it because it's uh it, it's it's one of the worst parts of doing this you think well shall i just shut comments altogether? but then people want to talk to each other and uh, 
Uh, it becomes really quite difficult um, because, you know, there's only one of you and there's seven billion of everyone else. And let's face it, there are some real nut jobs out there. So it's unpleasant. So what the way I'm going to do it is I'm not even going to look at comments uh, for more than about five minutes a week. That's it. And on one day, uh, I can't remember, I've got it written down somewhere, but one day, that's it. I'm going to spend precisely five minutes um, um, blocking, you know, the trolls and the, you know, come to this very doubtful site, you know, spam, you know, that sort of thing. It's, just, it's not going to be, you know, a high cerebral process, just block, 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 block. And everyone else, you know, I don't care. I'm not going to be answering anything. I'm not going to be answering anything. Uh, if I like a particular comment, you know, I might like it, but that's it. That's going to be the extent of it. I, I will have a look if there are any interesting questions. I might just cut and paste those out. I'm not going to be answering them directly. I'll just put them in a in a piece of paper. And if I do one of these Q&A things, then it'll come up. I'm not going to be saying so-and-so from, you know, whoever it was asked this question. It's just a question. So there it is. Um, and then I'll try and answer it if I can, if I can add something to it. So that's the way I see that. Anyway. Going now to books, um, to me, books are the key. If you want to understand where we are now, um, obviously the Quran was, is your, you know, the go-to book. And I don't, I'm saying my translation necessarily, because most of this you can't really go wrong with, you know, even with the most, um, I don't know, kind of dyed in the wool, hardcore, you know, hadith wielding. Reading most of this, you know, it's just it's just obvious. So uh, that is a good thing because we've been here before. We've we've been in um, degraded, godless, uh, immoral times before, and you know, look what happens. So anyway, I would refer you to my book, The uh, God Protocol, if you're interested in that, and I'll get onto that. Um, which you can download for free. All of my stuff is you can get for free. But I'm going to go through these books that are books that I've read them all, except for one, which I'll tell you when we get to it, and one of which I actually wrote. Uh, please don't come to me and say, ah, this writer, I read on Wikipedia, he's an ist or an ite or an obe. I don't care. I, I don't care what you think, all right? Don't care. Um, you know, factoids are of no interest to me. I don't accept everything that all of these writers say. To some extent, some parts of what they say are mutually exclusive. What what they are, and I'm going to present them to you in a particular order, is they what they are is in a way going from what you might call a very material understanding of the world up through to what you might call a more I don't want to use the word esoteric because it's not quite the right word, but um, more of an, by t in terms of symbol and analogy, buttressing against the actual metaphysical, you know, the truth that transcends analysis. So I'm going to present them in the, in the order that I'm going to present them. I'm not saying that every single thing in this, in these books, is gospel for want of a better word but if you read all of these books i think you'll have a much much better idea of what's going on in the world uh, than by watching for example you know news of whatever stripe because in order to see where you're going you have to see where you've been and uh just part of my own analytical and sort of intellectual process, is more about drawing away from all of the details and seeing the much, much bigger picture. And in a way, when you see that, that these things, there are patterns and and so on, leaving aside, you know, the questions of eternity, the question of the meaning of life and those sorts of questions, but it, it will it's possible to see yourself within a within a a, a pattern and a plan which is less mm, which is less terrifying for people who, uh, for whom uh, three years ago their goals were purely material and they had been trained to experience their life only in material terms. Faced with the, uh, I mean, we're, we're always facing death, but 
faced with an existential crisis, which it is for a lot of people, uh, because they'd never really thought about it before, um, for because they were, frankly, propagandized. Um, there are people who have questions, and m most of those questions have been answered in some way, at least from some perspective, quite a long time ago. The way I would... So what I'm going to present to you, these they're almost like an ascending ladder with certain overlaps. But if you bring yourself to them and read them reflectively, uh, I'm fairly confident that at the end of it, you'll have a, an expanded idea of where, where we really are and perhaps less of an interest of spend, in spending an awful lot of time in, uh, in, in consuming... In, uh, sort of the immediate responses to what's to what may or may not have just happened and which government is doing x y and z and and all of that more temporal more immediate more uh, brittle sort of thing give you a bit, bit of a better perspective anyway this is just I'm just sharing what i've come across and it may be of use to you and then i'm going to wrap this up so these are they're all dead all of them so I'm, I'm not really going to talk about them too much, but just a few words. So this is the first one. This is Imperium by Francis P. Yockey. Uh, he was a lawyer, essentially, and he was uh, taken. To, he went to Nuremberg to uh, as part of the kangaroo court of that process and was horrified by, by what he saw there. And he wrote this when he was a young man. He, he died by, I think, it was about 40, something like that. Uh, anyway doesn't really that isn't the main thing about about his work there are things in there that i don't agree with there are people who will read that book and come to certain conclusions from it that you won't like that i won't like perhaps uh, we're living in this kind of very brittle rather silly sort of world so i have to say this but okay but if you think you don't like him what do you get to this guy uh this book is the industrial society and its future by theodore john kasinski otherwise known as the Unabomber. Now, there's going to be tons you're not going to like about this guy, but I would say read it. I don't agree with everything he says in, in this. And in fact, he's, in fact, both of these books are surpassed, in my view, intellectually and uh, analytically by, by what comes next. But this is, this is kind of laying a foundation upon which you can understand the next book. So the next book that I, I recommend is this. It's The Technological Society by Jacques Silal. Um, I'm not going to be providing links in the drop down below. You know, this isn't any sort of, um, I don't know what they call it. What do you call it when people make money from recommending stuff? This is not what, that's not, I'm not, I don't care where you buy them. Just get hold of them. Get hold of them in the second hand bookshop if you can. I'll put the titles down below and you can sort it out yourself, I think. But I, this is a, for me, this is a foundational book. This absolutely, it was great. Um, mm -hmm. And if you've read Kaczynski before you read this, you'll understand that when Kaczynski's talking about technology, that this really puts the bones on it. You know, this puts the, sorry, the meat on the bones. It's it's technique as, as distinct from technology. Anyway, I don't want to get too kind of long long-winded about it. The next one, this is a must read also in terms of understanding what you you know your opinions, how you've been formed, how you've been made, and I, I'm not. I'm not saying this is a, a you know sort of in, in order to belittle anybody. We, we we're all brought up in this. In this book, the really the, the kind of the key takeaway uh, is there are two types of propaganda. I mean, I actually have a background in propaganda, and I still found this interesting. Uh, one is um, I think it's called it integral, integrated propaganda, which is what I used to call uh, ground bait. It's just the assumptions that are in films. It's just, you know, all of that stuff. And then there's agitprop, which is um, propaganda for a particular purpose, which is what you're most certainly living through right now. Anyway, read this. This is Propaganda. Focus. Yes, Propaganda by Jacques Silal. Propaganda, a formation of men's attitudes. I have read, recommended that before, but somewhere else. But I definitely recommend that. Then... If you're still alive and kicking, <laughs> I would recommend this uh, again. Uh, this is Oswald Spengler. <sighs> Amazing. It's called Man and Techniques. 
a contribution to a philosophy of life. It's not a long read, and, and we've got some more Spengler coming up, but definitely read this. Okay, a little cough there. Um, next one, Spengler. Again, Oswald Spengler, The Hour of Decision. This was a phenomenal read. If you read that on top of Man and Techniques, after I would I would say Jacques Silal, that would be the way to do that. Um, the next one, I haven't finished these. Uh, it's another Spengler book. Um, I'm in the process of reading it, but uh, it's it's a heavy read. I, I mean, some people will find uh, uh, the Technological Society quite a heavy read. I, I didn't because I was just fascinated by it. But you know, this is a slow read. This this isn't this isn't meme reading. This isn't uh, you know this isn't Twitter. But what you'll find if you're not used to reading, if you're if you're out of the habit, is that it, if you you just get used to it. It's a muscle. You just get used to it by doing it. And uh, you have to, if you've spent a lot of time on the internet, you will find it difficult for a while um, because you've been debased. That's what it does to you. It's like uh, if you've been eating junk food for the last five years and decide you want to you know, go for a run, Guess what? You know, your, your arteries are clogged and all the rest of it. But if you change your diet quite quickly, quite quickly, you'll 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 find that you start getting healthy again. And uh, I mean, just as an aside, uh, in my last year at university, I did a Torstel and Dostoevsky course and decided that I wasn't going to do this course unless I actually read the books, the main Dostoevsky books. There are four kind of main novels. Um, I read them then in English. I, I've read since in Russian, but at that time, I didn't. My Russian wasn't good enough, and uh, you know, it's a lot of reading. And it was my final year; I had a lot of writing to do as well. So I just basically made two hours a night. I think it was two hours a night, or maybe it was three. I can't remember. And what I found was that by reading attentively and and absorbing it and taking it in, you know, the first the first night I was reading X amount of pages. The second night I was reading more. I was able to read consistently more up to a certain kind of threshold with the same level of attention more pages in the same amount of time um like anything it's you know what you put into it is what you get out of it but this book uh which i'm going to recommend now which is spengler's the decline of the west i haven't finished it uh it's a slow read and it's excellent <laughs> um and I'm savouring it, so but I can't speak to it fully because I haven't finished it. Uh, there's a second part of it, is the rest of it, yeah. volume two. Um, I, I do absolutely recommend this translation. I have another translation, and uh, it's it's not as good. It's 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 almost unreadable actually. But this translation, which is by, I'll tell you who it's by. No, it's literally not here. As I say that one and it's produced it's made by these people arctos so if it's if it's arctos that's the one you want uh, uh the, the translator actually hides his name but uh get that one because the other one's unreadable well the one i saw it was produced in about 1950 it's just it's just unreadable anyway so that one now what we're doing is we're moving up through the levels okay so <sighs> The, the the next one that I would recommend reading um, is this, The Crisis of the Modern World by René Guénon. If you don't know who René Guénon was, uh, you're missing a lot because this guy was a, a genuine philosopher. I would I would call him more, I would call him uh, in some ways a master. He was uh, I don't agree with everything that he says, and probably you won't, and probably even he didn't. You know, on reflection, but this book, uh, if you want a really good insight in what, into where we are in this much, much bigger field, rather than you know, sort of driving like a Russian, you know, three inches away from the car in front, you know, stop, start, stop, start, stop, start. No, you don't want to be like that. You want to, you want to be that. You want to be the ocean liner. That's that's take that sort of perspective. Um, it'll help you deal with the corners and all the rest of it much easier. So I definitely recommend this. And again, I recommend them in this order. 
And then the last one of this kind of series of books that I recommend is this. Again, René Guénon and The Reign of Quantity and Signs and the Signs of the Times. And that book is, a, you know, again, you have it, 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 it's a bit of a read. Some things you won't understand, some things I don't understand. Some things perhaps don't really translate very well from the, it's written in French. Um, but just, you know, take what you can from it. And it, these books, I think, are things you can come back to later. But I think by going through these levels of reading, it will give you a, a much broader perspective uh, in terms of the West, in terms of uh, the the West as in, you know, the sort of what's, what we would call the, um, uh, you know, what they call the sort of um, the international community, you know, in political terms right now. But but I, also the broader West, any any country which uses technique in, in the sense that Jacques Zilal uses it, which is pretty much everywhere. It doesn't matter even if you live in Vietnam, you're still in the West. In, in a certain sense, you are, as is Chechnya, despite the residual, almost vestigial tradition which is in tension with this thing, but only one will win. Anyway, that finally, I'm going to recommend my own book, and this isn't sort of a reason to do it, and you, you can download this for free in the um, PDF, so, you know, please do. But there is, it is in hard, hard copy, so this is it, The God Protocol, which I think will make more sense in some ways when, if you read the Quran on a regular basis and you've read the books that I've just recommended, that what that does will put those things into some more of a kind of a broader perspective. Um, the the PDF it's not like a demo version or something. It's not like you know it's the book. You can just take it off, print it off, read it. Um, I've got three more books <laughs> which don't really fit into this schema um, very well. But I'm going to recommend them also. And again, there are things about these books that you'll find someone saying, oh, he was this, a knight, an Istanobel, whatever it is. Everyone's a knight, an Istanobel. If you haven't been called a bad name by now, you're just boring. It just means you've, you're so anodyne. You've just done nothing of any consequence. OK, everybody gets called names. This guy gets called names as well, mainly by people who've never read him. I, again, I'm not kind of holding to everything that he says. I'm just saying that this is kind of an extra reading that somehow doesn't quite fit into this system. Uh, Evola, Julius Evola, who, who wrote these three books that I'm going to recommend, was something of a, in some ways, uh, maybe a student or uh, of René Guénon to some extent. They disagreed on quite a lot of things. And uh, over time, um, came to his own, you know, very distinct views on things. But this is the first one, Men Among the Ruins, which I, I recommend. The second one, in fact, I would say, read this one first out of these Evola books, Revolt Against the Modern World. Now, by the time you've read all these other ones, if you go on to read this as well, you'll, you know, it'll, it'll stretch you further, but it's, um, it's, it's worth it. And lastly, uh, Ride the Tiger. He basically came to the view, which I don't... Well, he came... He, he, at some point in Evola's uh, development, he kind of thought it was possible to, to recreate a traditional society. Uh, I, I think as he got older and wiser, he realised that th it was impossible. You can't fix... You can't fix... Was you can't fix woke, you know. There's there's no fixing this for reasons that actually Evola identifies better. And eventually he came to the view. <clears throat> oh, sorry, Ilal for for reasons that Ilal says best in technological society. <clears throat> By the time he wrote uh, Ride the Tiger, I think he'd kind of come to the conclusion that there was no way out of this, and the best you could do was to to um, develop you know, survival strategies. Um, as the whole thing goes down. I don't personally agree with that. My own view is more of a cataclysmic view, which I think is what Guénon, in a very understated way, came to at the end. It's something that I've embraced, um, you know, almost in a sort of fight club <laughs> style uh, in my work uh, in, in the God Protocol, based on the internal mechanics of what quite clearly the Quran is talking about. Anyway, I wanted to put all that into one video 
so that uh, so that people who wish to you know, to use this time to 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 the best advantage um, had that, or at least on the basis of what I've learned, um, have that opportunity. Uh, that's kind of it. I'm going to start off with some of the videos that I've talked about earlier in this talk and see how it goes. Um, but I'm also going to be doing some other things as well. Uh, for me, the kind of the intense uh, mental effort that I was locked into actually for eight years uh, without without any psychological break apart from the five weeks I went to the United States. Um, I've had a, a time to kind of recover from that. And so is my family to some extent. And so <clears throat> I do have some energy back again. The blood has sort of come back to my back into my veins. But I, I we'll see how it goes. But I wanted to put this out there. I hope everyone is well. Um, as I say, I'm not going to be responding to individual um, messages, whatever they call them, comments. I am only going to be spending five minutes a week looking at them and sort of blah, blah, blah. And I, I, I ignore most of the stuff that comes into my email that isn't specific to moving things forward. You know, uh, I, I, I'm, you know, just sending me, you know, your latest pet theories and so on. Go, there, there, is, there are websites where you can do all that and talk about it or talk about it in the comments or take it to, you know, other websites that where you can do that. I, I'm not your man for that. I I'm, don't take it personally, but I'm I'm not likely to answer unless it's, you know, unless it's, um, you know, completely you know, like a like a bolt from the blue. But it probably won't be because I, I've had tons and tons and tons of it. So please don't take it personally. It's not meant personally, but you have to understand that the reason why I get things done is because I prioritize my time and I use it and I jealous and I guard it jealously. It's just how it works as, as it does for anybody who produces anything. And if you look at people like, I'm not comparing myself, but if you look at people like <clears throat> Mozart or Beethoven, they were at their desks at nine in the morning, every morning. They weren't wandering around, you know, reading poetry and waiting for inspiration to strike. No, they worked. It's what we call in Russian, Stampovka. It's a kind of, you know, it's almost like, it's it's just, you have to just keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. And part of doing that is choosing, in fact, is choosing what not to do. And, and that's the great choice now, is choosing what not to do. It's not just choosing what to do, it's choosing what not to do. I've chosen and I've, I've chosen not to use the internet pretty much because it's become useless to me. I'm choosing to spend my time on dealing with, you know, reading these books, but not replying to the stream of sometimes quite frequently um, doubtful <laughs> emails and so on. I don't do it because I've got other things to do. It's not, it's not, a, it's not a rude thing. It's just, it's called, Staying focused, that's all it is. Anyway, I think that's everything. Yeah, I hope everyone's well, and that's all for now. If you're listening on YouTube, you can download my full translation of the Quran free and all other books from Quranite.com using the button in the top right-hand corner or buy hard copies there at 10% less than on Amazon. You can download the audio from my YouTube videos to your mobile device using the links in the drop-down below. I recommend meetquoranites.com to connect with other Qur'an alone believers. I do not monetize this channel and I make all my work available free, but you can use the link in the drop down below to donate if you would like to help me keep doing this. And remember, this life is short. Eternity is long. If you want good trees, plant good seeds.